Hey guys, um, I thought I'd make this video because I just got a Helix, and uh, it's great by the way. But um, one of the things that I really, really needed to be able to do with it was to control Ableton Live from the actual Helix controller while also being able to do, you know, change my guitar tones. Um, so I'm gonna kind of show you how I have that set up. I'm gonna assume that you know how to create the buttons to send the commands over there. If you don't know how, um, maybe I can do a video later on. There's tons of videos on YouTube about how to create the actual buttons. But what I'm gonna show you now is how I actually have them laid out to be able to use in a live situation, um, which was something that I really kind of struggled with finding it. I couldn't find any videos on that. And so I kind of had to really like sit down for a few nights and, you know, figure out how am I going to actually program this thing so that, you know, while I'm playing live, I can quickly and efficiently switch to the Ableton controls and, you know, be able to fire tracks. So I'm going to show you that on the Helix now. Okay, so here we are looking at the Helix. Um, please excuse the, the mess everywhere. I'm just kind of like throwing this together. But So I have this first, first let's start with this. Um, I have it set up with presets on top and snapshots on the bottom, okay? Um, my mode switch is the same, turns it into pedal board mode, you know, tap and the tuner switch over here. But one thing I changed here is I changed these two instead of banking up, um, you know, across preset numbers, this actually banks up to the next preset. So you can see my first preset here says Ableton, and my next one are the songs in my set list. So I have, you know, Never Lost. If I tap on that, it brings up the parts of the song. Now, these are not Ableton controls. These are only for guitar tones down here. Same thing for Lion and the Lamb, just guitar tones, guitar tones, sorry. And then same thing for Creator You Lord, and there's one more song. But how do I get to the next song? I don't actually use these up here to go to my next preset. I actually just bank up right here. I just press preset up and it takes me to my next song, which is Hallelujah. And I have guitar tone set up down here, right? And so I never actually press these up here, okay? All I do is bank up and down using these buttons here. The only time I'm ever gonna really use this up here is whenever I'm ready to use Ableton controls, right? So I'm ready to start a song. What I do, I click on Ableton. These down here, ignore these. I'm actually probably gonna remove these, right? But what I have set up is I go to Ableton right here. Now, I have a generic guitar tone set up to where I can play something, you know, in a pinch if I had to. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the mode button to go to like the pedal board mode. And what I've done is I've removed all guitar pedals and I've replaced them with 10 Ableton switches, okay? So I have play one, click only one, play two, click only two, and so on. I have four of these. So this plays my first song, plays the second song, plays the third song and fourth song. And then if something happens, you know, say we get off the track, I have a click only option, which allows me to, to click only for each one of the different songs. Then I have a stop button, which kills everything in Ableton. And then I have a fade tracks button, which actually fades the tracks out instead of a dead stop. It fades the tracks out over like two measures so that it's not like a sudden, you know, loss of sound. Um, this one is a really great to have like in a, you know, panic situation. If something bad happens and you got to, you know, get out of your tracks, but you want to keep a click going. Um, so I have that option there. So I'm going to show you how these work. So over here on the computer, let's look at Ableton. So I have these buttons mapped out, right? So my play one button, which is right here, it's just mapped to this first scene, you know, the first song, right? It's the title of the song. So when I press this button, one, two, you can hear it. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I pull and press stop, I press the stop button. The stop button is mapped to the stop button up here in the uh, transport right there. Okay, um, so that's how I stop it. But if say I wanna, you know, we're playing, right? And we're in the in the song, but then I need to go to click only. One, two, so one, two, now three, now we're playing four, the song, five, six. and something happens, I need to go to click only. 
I say click only. Intro. All right, and then it just goes to click only. And now we're just at click. But what's even cooler is let's uh, let's start this song again, right, by hitting the start button. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we're in the song, but let's say I want to fade the tracks out. I hit Intro. fade. And you hear them fade over two measures, right? So it's a nice way to do it um, without having everything just be killed at once. And actually, um, that fade is set up to actually only fade the... Uh, fade the tracks and keep the click in there, but I had I had to change the routing on Ableton to be able to get it through the monitors because usually I have these going to like eight different outputs on Sundays. But um, anyways, that's kind of how I do that. So I hope that was kind of helpful, um, but that's kind of the, so far, the best way that I've found to set this up. Um, and it's really easy to get in and out of, and you know, if you have to go back and forth, and I'll kind of, show you that real quick, how you would get in and out of this Ableton mode on the Helix. Let me show you that real quick. So let's say we're in the first song, right? And I have intro set up and chorus. Let's say we're like in the middle of the chorus, right? And I have my guitar tones set up for that. And we're playing, you know, everything's going good. And, um, you know, all of a sudden I need to kill Ableton. Well, all I have to do is hit Ableton, hit the pedal board mode, and hit stop. And it kills everything or I can hit fade tracks, right? Um, oops, sorry. So now let's say, you know, we're at the end of the song, song's over, now I need to go to the next song, right? Well, now all I have to do is hit Ableton, pedal board mode, play song two. One, two. And now we're playing song two. One, two, I can get three, out of this, four. go to my song two, sounds and there we go and now I can stop this there's a little bit of tapping required but it's not you know it's not crazy so it's not like a crazy crazy amount of tapping it's a little bit but it gives you a lot of control with Ableton being able to have all 10 of these foot switches available to you to use so um, if you have uh, any questions, feel free to comment on the video, and I'd be happy to answer them as best as I can. Uh, I'll admit I'm not the most versed person with the Helix, but um, you know, at the end of the day, it is just MIDI controlling. It's about you know, kind of finding the best way to program for your needs. So everybody's way might be a little bit different. If you have a better way, I would totally love to hear it. Um, I'm always open to learning new things, but I thought I'd share this because. Uh, it was kind of a brain buster for me to, you know, and try to figure this out. So um, if you have any suggestions or anything like that, I'd love to hear them. Hit me up. Thanks.